Hey guys, it's Jan for Chess24. With another game analysis, we shall be taking a look at the encounter between Azerbaijan's Shahmat Yarov and the Indian chess legend Vishy Anand from round number nine of the Grand Chess Tour in Zagreb, Croatia. Neither player has had a particularly great tournament so far. Mahmoud Yarov on two and a half out of eight in shared last place with Hikaru Nakamura. Well, Vishy Anand doing a little better, three and a half out of eight, minus one, has not won a game yet. One loss and seven draws. Especially for Mahmoud Yarov, it's been a very rough 2019. He started the year as world number three, 28 19. But since then, he's lost like um, 70 rating points is at around 2750 in the life list and just doesn't seem able to get things going after a stellar 2017 and 2018. So let's see how it goes this time around with the white pieces against Vichy. Mount Yarov opts for 1d4 and I have to warn you, brace yourself for a highly complicated game because there will be blood. d4, knight of 6 played by Vichy, c4, e6, knight of 3, d5. Nadiarov has dabbled in the Catalan a bit, but this time around he goes for knight to c3. And Vishyanan plays his main weapon these days, the Vienna, the move d takes c4, which happens to be a line that I know pretty well. So, good news for me, at least to make it through the beginning of this video. Nadiarov plays a critical move, pawn to e4. Vishy goes for bishop b4, pinning this knight, threatening knight takes e4. And here, Mohamed Yarov plays arguably the most critical move. Bishop takes c4, a pawn sacrifice on e4. The main alternative is the move bishop g5, which has featured quite a bit in Magnus Carlsen's recent games, as an example. So bishop takes c4 is played in this one. Black has no choice but to take the pawn. Knight takes e4 and short castles. Here, practice has shown that it is too dangerous for black to grab another pawn by knight c3, bc and bishop takes c3, rook b1 or bishop a3 are both very very scary. So instead after knight takes c3, b takes c3, the bishop used to retreat bishop d6 or bishop e7, which both are not refuted as far as I know, but have come under a bit of heat over the last couple of years. Therefore, Vichy chooses the move of the hour a move that both players already have experience with, he retreats the knight to f6, which I believe was popularized maybe by Fabiano Carana, or maybe Carana started employing it after he didn't get anything against this move with white against Elyanov. The move has been around quite a bit at the highest level, and as we'll see in a minute, even Vichy himself had it on the board already in the year 2011, but it's already now that I think it's becoming a bit of a main line or the main line in this position at the top level. And if I were to redo or update my Vienna series on Chess24, I believe I would also give this as my choice for black. Knight to f6 does not help the white structure for now by giving him an extra pawn near the center and is putting some pressure on white to do something directly because if black manages to castle, go knight bd7, knight b6, control is d5 square, black can easily just be held upon. So the way to keep the initiative going for white here is a move queen a4 check. That's, yeah, not really a debate. Queen a4 check forcing knight to c6, where the knight is somewhat misplaced, but it has to defend the bishop. Not a choice. And now white does face the big choice that will define the opening here. It is either knight to e5 or bishop to g5. Bishop to g5 will be played in this game we're looking at. While knight e5 has recently been featured, for example, in the game Carlsen versus Duda, where after the cute rook b8, Carlsen played this new move, rook to d1, put some pressure on Duda, but I'm sure ways and means have been found by ex-world champion Viciana to deal with this. After all, he's employed the Vienna quite a bit against Magnus Carlsen in their recent clashes, so he's had to be ready for this line. Mamadiarov does not go for knight e5, instead Mamadiarov repeats a line that he has already played in Weik an See against Duda, which is the move bishop to g5. Also very logical, pinning this knight and threatening to blow the position open by playing d5 before black is fully coordinated. 
Vichy does have bad memories about this move because he lost this game I mentioned earlier against Levon Aronian back in 2011 after bishop to e7. Which looks logical, but it's a bit too slow. Bishop f6, bishop f6, d5, ed, rook fe1, bishop e6, bishop takes d5. And the white initiative in the center is very strong. White will regain the pawn with a bad position. And this is not a line that black should be playing. Vichy instead plays the better move bishop takes c3 this time around. Parts with the bishop, but by giving up the bishop makes sure that white does not get in d5 in the near future. And he buys himself some time to develop after b takes c3 castles. Now there is no d5, which would be a problem if black had castled immediately without exchanging on c3 first. This is a position that Mamadiar already had in that game against Duda. Against Duda he went knight to e5, but Duda equalized very comfortably with queen to d6, rook fe1, knight d5. Had no problems whatsoever. The game ended in a draw, so Mamadiarov also improves on his previous game this time around. And he plays the move rook fe1, keeping his options open, controlling the e5 square but not committing the knight there yet. Also still able to just play Quietly, rook a d1, bishop d3, bishop b1, queen c2 would be a typical plan to put pressure on the black king side. Vichy has to decide how to deal with that looming pressure. He goes for the move knight to e7, which is a typical idea. The knight is headed to f5 or to g6, and then this bishop shall be kicked away by playing h6, making sure this pin, which was very annoying, does no longer stay in place because the bishop on h4 cannot keep his position if it's tackled by the knight from f5 or g6. I'm a little surprised that Vichy starts by playing knight e7. I thought it's more precise to start with h6 here. The point being that if white plays a natural move bishop h4, now we go knight e7 and this bishop already made his choice. It committed to the h4 square. We'll see later in the game that with the bishop from g5, it can still find a different route via c1 and a3 or c1 b2, which is not the case in the position after h6 bishop h4 knight e7. So I thought this was somewhat more precise. h6 bishop c1 is possible, but then rook b8, a6, b5, for example, is a decent plan. But Anna goes for knight e7 directly, um, which is met by another typical move, bishop to d3. This bishop does not have that much to do on c4. Well, from d3, not only does it control the squares where the knight might land, it also starts eyeing the h7 pawn and square. Vichy goes knight to f5. And Mavidyarov decides to play it quietly. Now plays rook a to d1. Pawn to h6. That was the idea, as mentioned. This bishop is being kicked away. Can't really go to h4 now that the square is controlled. And Mavidyarov decides to keep the bishop. Go bishop c1. In these positions, even after bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, it's not obvious what black does after knight e5. He's still a pawn up, but it's still very tough to develop this bishop on c8. is somewhat passive, so even this line very much gives white full compensation. But understandably, Mamdiorf decides to keep the bishop alive, goes bishop to c1. Vichy starts developing his own bishop, plays pawn to b6, clearly intending to fianchetto it to go bishop to b7. And Mamed Yarov starts doing business in the center by playing pawn to c4. I'm not sure this is the best move. There was also a strong case to be made for something like bishop b1, bishop b7, knight e5, intending queen back to c2 and creating pressure on the, on the king side without committing to c4 yet, which does weaken the d4 pawn a little bit. So this was an interesting way to play as well, for sure. Mamed Yarov goes c4 and Vichy in this position does not play the natural bishop to b7, but instead plays rook to e8. I guess it's fine, but my computer in its wisdom does say bishop b7 was very possible. I'm sure Vichy did not play this because of pawn to d5. This can't be taken since there's bishop f5 and d6 looks like a terrible threat. But computer, as usual, is not impressed and he just says go rook e8, defend e6. If white takes here, then we have time to go bishop takes f3, hitting this rook, gf3, 
and knight to d4. And while white regained his pawn, we gained a great square for the knight on d4. And black is perfectly fine. Easier done when you know it works. But it does work, so bishop b7, d5, rook e8 would probably have forced Mamadiarov to play some, a somewhat slower move like queen to c2. When after knight d6, white still has good compensation, but the battle is only just beginning. Instead, Anna goes rook e8, directed against d5, which could now just be met by e takes d5. This knight is still defended by the bishop, but it's a somewhat slow move that allows white to reach a very harmonious setup by playing bishop to b2, defending the d4 pawn, and also occupying a beautiful diagonal, should d5 or dc5, as we will see, ever happen. Bishop to b7, and here the difference is that now, since he was given this tempo to play bishop b2, white can go knight e5, and d4 is no longer under pressure, since knight takes d4 would be a bit of a blunder after bishop d4, queen d4. Bishop h7, followed by rook takes d4, and obviously white wins, because the queen is falling. So instead, Vichy decides to turn passive, he goes knight to e7, which, yeah, is not a move one plays with great joy. Computer gives another very interesting alternative that I'm not sure one would think of at all during the game. He mentions the move b6 to b5, which I really like, but um, I doubt I would have even thought about this. The point is, queen takes b5, bishop takes g2, tactics. King g2, rook b8, and black regains his material having ruined the white king's position. If instead c takes b5, then white regains a pawn, but black gets a nice square for the knight on d5, the other knight can go to d6 without being bothered by the white c pawn, and black seems to be doing fairly well. So b5 was a nice little resource for Vichyant here. Instead, he retreats with the knight, knight to e7. A little passive. And Mamed Yarov now reaches his optimal setup. He goes bishop to b1, intending queen to c2, eyeing the h7 square. Once the queen is there, all kinds of tactics will always be looming. Knight to g4, d5. It's a scary, scary position for black. And Vichy, still one of the best defenders in the business, of course understands what's in store and understands that he has to take drastic measures to ease the pressure a little bit. He plays c5 here, willing to part with one pawn to at least create a square for his queen, then maybe bring the rook into play, and maybe generate some counterplay to distract white from his king's attack. For now, Mardiar is not distracted, plays queen c2. Anand should not dream about opening the position further here if he were to take this pawn. c takes d4, rook d4, queen c7, rook d7. This is one line, illustrating the dangerous waiting for black here. Knight takes d7, queen h7 check, king f8. Knight d7, queen d7, bishop g7, would be checkmate. Will not happen at this level, but it does illustrate what could happen. Therefore, black has no time to go, c takes d4, he has to get his queen out of the line of fire, asap, plays queen to c7. Now Yarov obviously continues mentioning that theme, goes d takes c5, when b takes c5 will once again be too slow. This time, even stronger than rook d7 is knight d7. Same idea, trying to distract this guy. And white wins, in all lines. If you feel like checking it out, do it. No time for black to recapture. Anand, Anna sends it, of course, goes rook a d8, covering this weak square on d7. And the fight is still very much looming. Mount Yarov wins his pawn back, which is always nice. C, B, A, B. So now he has the two bishops and an initiative for free. But the Anand pieces are now coordinated. Vichy Anand, one of the best defenders in the world, especially with this material balance. I've talked about this in the past. With a knight and a bishop against the bishop pair. Anand is just amazing, diffusing the pressure. However, here he also has to deal with the weak king. And Mamdiar wastes no time attacking it. Plays knight to g4. The threat... His knight takes f6, and once again, taking it will be met with a quick checkmate. So there's only one way to react to knight to g4. 
which is what Vichy does. Knight to e4. And surprisingly, there is no knockout here. Black is still very much in the game. Now you have tries by playing f3. The knight cannot move away. If you were to go to g5 here or on the next move, just gets kicked by h4. Once again, queen h7 decides. So Vichy has to turn to tactics to stay in the game. Goes queen c5 check, king h1. F2 is still covered, the knight still can't move. So counterattack it is. H5, best move. Hitting the white knight, saying, if you take my knight, I will take yours. Now Dyarov agrees to that exchange, but he says, before, let me ruin your pawn structure. So here is my horsey. I understand it has to die, but at least it will expose your king. G H6, F takes E4. This is starting to feel like the Santa Anita racetrack over here. Both these guys disappearing, but the fight is still in full swing. White is better, far from over. Anna goes E5 since this long diagonal had to be sort of covered up. But E5 weakens the D5 square and it leads Mamadiarov to a move that both players are very, very familiar with as an idea. Now Diarov goes for rook to d5 in exchange sacrifice in order to repair his structure and create a pass pawn and open lines against the white king. The reason I said that both players are very, very familiar with this move might need some explaining. So let's look at some classical games. For example, this position. It's from a game between Vichy Anand and a certain Gary Kasparov played in New York in the year 1995. World Championship match, Vichy Anand played the move Rook to d5 here against Kasparov and went on to win a nice game after knight d5, e d5. These pass pawns decided the game. Vichy has since remembered that strategy of going Rook to d5 and employed it against different opponents. For example, he did it against a certain Shachmamed Yarov in the year 2015, 20 years after the first time. In Shamkir, this position, white to move. Anand versus Mamed Yarov. Maybe you guys can guess the move. If not, I think you probably can guess the move. Anand played rook to d5 here and went on to win another nice game after bishop d5. CD5. So Mamadiarov has also paid attention and he says, you did this to me, I shall repay by going rook d5 myself. Which by the way, the computer does not like that much. The computer says, why well, should do boring stuff like bishop c1, regrouping this bishop to e3 or attacking the h6 pawn. But with this history, who could resist? Rook d5, black has no choice but taking, he has to take with the bishop. Because knight takes ed, this bishop is just a spectator and mate is coming. So bishop d5, ed, threatening queen h7, knight g6 only move, rook to f1, threatening rook f7, and here Anna plays the completely human move, rook e7, defending the f7 pawn. Well, the computer says, you know what, rook f7, who cares, not that big a deal, you can just go b5, allow rook f7, and now not take, this loses. But just go rook d6, cover the knight, and everything's fine. But frankly, humans don't play like this. You don't allow rook f7, and then just play rook d6. Humans play rook e7, cover the pawn. Now the arm goes queen c1. Some alternatives here at every juncture, but queen c1, very logical, targeting h6. Then she plays rook a7, which seems to be a mistake. The rook does not find that much work on a7. It was better to try to get some counterplay by playing b5 yet again. Bishop a3, b4, bishop b2, rook c8, and you know, Compi sort of hanging around. Rook a7 played, a3, nice move by Mamadiarov, just creating a loft for the distant future. Rook to d6, covering g6, and maybe trying to scare white away from going queen takes h6, because there could be some knight jumps, but Mamadiarov is not square, scared. He recognizes that knight jumps do not work because knight f4, for example, would be 
pretty well met by Shou H7, King H8, Bishop E5, white wins. So after Queen H6, the H6 pawn has fallen. This rook has achieved nothing on H7. On A7, has to return to E7 to defend E5, but clear indication that things have gone wrong for black here. Now the Arab returns to C1 with the queen, which is logical. They just had this position, but now he's grabbed a pawn on H6, made some progress. Instead, Compi says, just go bishop e4 and you'll win. One of Compi's points is that queen takes c4. It's well met by rook c1 with queen e4. Rook c8 check. Compi is pretty good in these positions. Obviously, queen c4 not forced, but computer says there's no defense against. He's slowly building attack on the black king. Didn't happen. Queen c1 was played. Now Vichy finally organized some counterplay with b5, bishop a3, forces b4, so there's no more pressure on the c4 pawn. Bishop back to b2, rook to a6. I don't really like his rooks on this a5. The black position remains tough to play. Rook to f5, targets this guy. f6, covers g5 at least and allows a rook to defend along the 7th rank, but it does have some drawbacks. One of those being that the knight on g6 is weakened and these light squares. The other one being that the f6 pawn could become a target itself. And once again, once the computer says queen f1 was strong. I'm saying once again, the computer gives a weird, complicated winning move, not the move queen f1 itself. But it's another tough move to play, especially if we keep in mind the both players were low on time here, and with the time control they play in this Grand Chess Tour, there is no safe haven on move 40, which gives you extra time. You remain in time trouble all the way. You start the game with 2 hours, 10 minutes. You don't get extra time on move 40. You only get the 30 seconds delay per move. Therefore, the players here can't spend all their time trying to make it to move 40 life, but they have to keep some thinking time in reserve. Now the plays queen h6 after f6. That's a tremendously logical move as well, targeting this, preparing rook h5, but it does seem to be a mistake. And Vichy had not one but two serviceable defenses here. One of those was rook to g7, covering the knight, and the point being that after rook takes h5, knight f4 organizes quite some counterplay. Well, the white attack does not crash through here. Queen h8, king f7, rook h7, for example, queen f8, keeps everything protected, and we would have a roughly equal endgame all of a sudden. So rook g7 was maybe the most cunning choice here. Vichy plays a move that also holds, but where in order to hold, you have to create some very, very hard to calculate fireworks. He plays a move knight to f4, very natural as well, prepares rook h7, rook g7, queen f2, but knight to f4 does allow a tactical shot. Maybe you guys can see it. It's bishop takes e5. Boom. One point. It's fe rook of a checkmate. Pretty unpleasant. Another is that the move played in the game rook takes e5 is not good enough. Since after rook e5, fe queen a6, white emerges with extra material and the black initiative. We'll see this in a minute, but it's not strong enough to provide a draw here after queen f2. So what to do after bishop takes e5? This, yeah. Pretty tough to calculate. Maybe you can find it by elimination if you see that nothing else works. But I am still surprised that this does work. It's the move queen to f2. Threatens checkmate, but white can take the knight on f4 in three different ways. The funniest line is the one after the most obvious move to me at least. Bishop takes f4, removing this bishop from attack on e5. Then black has some checks. Rook e1, king h2, queen g1, king g3. Rook a3, king h4, but you could still think that white is in good shape here. Queen f2 is well met by g3, white wins. Instead, however, black has a winning move in this position. And I find it quite remarkable. It's the move queen takes g2, just calmly taking the pawn. And it turns out that with all these attackers close to the black king, white does not have a sensible check. And black is just completely winning because of the threat of rook a3 checkmate. One very important reason is that rook g5 check is met by fg and attacking moves for white here like queen g6, queen h7, bishop h7 would be strong 
but they're against the rules since f3 is a check. So black gives checkmate first or gets a winning position first. That was 1-9, not forced. Bishop takes f4, which indeed would be a losing move. Mm, the other lines lead to equal positions, which are still weird and hard to calculate, but somewhat more believable than the rook f4 stuff. Something along those lines, for example, here, here, queen f6 and h4. And white does not seem to have enough resources to deliver checkmate. Black is counterplay with the threat of queen g3 check. Position seems to be equal. So queen to f2, it would have been, there's more lines which you, which you can check out, like rook f4, queen e1. Black does hold, it's 0, 0, 0 in computer speech. But Vichy goes rook e5 instead, after which, in computer speech, it's plus 5. Fe, queen takes a6, queen f2 is what he relied on, threatening checkmate. And bishop e4 would be met by bishop e1 check. But the problem is that the black king is also open. And white can use checks to improve his queen's position. Queen c8 check. This queen will reach a great square. After king f7 has played in the game, it comes to f5. King g7 wouldn't have been any better after queen c7. The queen will eventually come closer, for example, king c8. King f8, queen c8. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what am I doing? King f8, queen d8. That's late here. King g7, queen g5. King f7, queen f5. And the queen is back in business. Actually, here bishop e4 was good. So, king f7 played, queen f5, king g8, queen g5, king f8. Now Yarov says, you know what, now my queen covers, checkmate, I have time to defend against some other threats, I'll go king h2, and nothing works for you. King h2, very sober, quiet little move, stopping queen e1 check, making sure that knight e2 is not really an option, because now knight e2 is met by queen f5, and all the endgames are winning for white. Therefore, there's not much left that Vichyana could hope for. He goes h5, h4, at least boxing the white king in. But it does not carry much of a threat. And Mavidyar plays one more precise move. He plays the move bishop to f5, which defends against the threat of knight e2 in a different way. Now knight e2 would be met by queen f6 check. And wherever the white king, the black king goes, the bishop gives a discovered check, followed by picking up the queen, for example. King a, bishop g6, followed by queen f2. So, with knight e2 not really be an, being an option, and faced with the very obvious plan of d6, d7, d8, Vichy Anand decides to resign. There is not much that can be done to keep the game going here. Therefore, Shachman Yarov earns a hard-fought victory against Vichy. I like this game. Vichy got into a bit of a passive position out of the opening. I pointed out some spots here. Maybe h6 is possible. Then later, after b6, c4, bishop b7 was possible to serve rook e8. And two moves later, after knight e5, instead of knight e7, computer suggests this shot b5. Well, after knight e7, here Vichy had to defend a very passive, very dangerous position against a great attacker like Shachman Yarov. And he did. Vichy played amazingly well here for a long time, making all the only moves, knight e4, h5, and so on and so forth. Hung in there, but a massive cost, a lot of energy, a lot of time. So finally, when Shah kept throwing new waves of attack here, not always playing precise according to the computer, but always threatening stuff, Vichy collapsed and did not have the time to find a defense here in the end. One of those was rook g7, the other was this amazing knight f4, rook bishop e5. Queen F2 business. So that means Mamed Yarov finally picks up a victory in this tournament. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to know the other results, then switch this video off now, because I'll show you the table after this round. Okay, you're still here, then here we go. Shah Mamed Yarov, now on three and a half points, catches up with Vichy Anand, Hikaru Nakamura in Seoul last place. Well, at the top, Magnus Carlsen is half a point ahead of Wesley So, whom he happens to face in round number 10 with the black pieces. So, there is still intrigue in this tournament. I hope you liked this game. I did like it. Thanks for watching. See you guys on chess24.com.